the moon. For decades, we dreamt of sending people to its surface, wondering what secrets we may discover. Now, more than 40 years after we touched down, evidence shows we may not know the whole truth about what or who NASA found on the moon. Something strange is happening on the moon, and we believe it's not human. Doctored photos, UFO sightings by astronauts, and allegations of a massive cover-up plague NASA's five-decade history. What did astronauts find on the moon? And what did they bring back with them? Houston, uh, this is Discovery. We still have the alien spacecraft uh, under repairing. Tonight, we expose the secret side of space missions the world has never seen. Join us as the hidden truth behind NASA and aliens on the moon is unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed. Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Beginning in 1968, NASA's Apollo space program sent nine manned missions to the moon. The astronauts on board are the only humans to have ever set foot on an alien world. I kind of have two moons in my head. I look at the moon just like everybody else who's never been there, uh, and you know, there it is. And I, I've, I've always thought it was interesting. But every once in a while, I do think of a second moon, you know, the one that I recall from up close. Alien theorists have long believed NASA has known of and perhaps even made contact with alien life. But the history of putting a man on the moon did not begin with a liftoff. It began with a crash. July 8, 1947, Roswell, New Mexico. Reports of a downed UFO send shockwaves across America. The U.S. Air Force responds immediately. What they discover changes the world forever. A UFO crashed in Roswell in 1947. We recovered technology. We recovered a live alien, a living extraterrestrial entity. What do we do with this? During the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States were competing on multiple fronts. Not necessarily fighting a war with bullets, but a war with technology. And of course, anything extraterrestrial would also mean very exotic technology and would be of extreme importance to the U.S. Army. The next 10 years see inventions decades ahead of their time. The hydrogen bomb, solar power, microchips, lasers, and the U.S.'s crowning achievement NASA's powered spacecraft. Now it is time to take longer strides. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. When Kennedy put forth the national goal for America to put a man on the moon, the facade was it was to beat the Russians. But it was about a lot more than that. The scientific breakthroughs that we were going to accomplish getting a man to the moon was something that far surpassed any politics. In 1964, the Ranger 7 was the first spacecraft that was able to beam back images of the moon's surface. The Ranger 7 returned 4,308 photos of an alien world we had never seen up close, the moon. Now, what's not talked about is some of the actual photographs that weren't shown publicly. A case can be made that, in fact, they were able to transmit images back to Earth and that they did show artificial structures on the moon. And so people in the United States, at the very least, were aware that there were very likely alien bases on the moon. As humans get closer to setting foot on the moon, strange and unusual events begin to unfold. June 1965. NASA transcripts between astronaut James McDivitt of the Gemini spacecraft may reveal a report of the first UFO sighting in space. According to the transcript of the Gemini mission, astronaut McDivitt says, I just saw something else up here with me, but just as I was getting close enough to take a good picture, the sun got in the way and I lost it. It had big arms sticking out of it. It looked like I only had it for just a minute. After many of the Gemini astronauts started to see things in space, they came up with code words like fire, 
bogey, even Santa Claus, to describe craft that they were seeing flying outside of the spaceship. On December 24th, 1968, the Apollo 8 spacecraft makes the first successful orbit around the moon. This is something that many people could easily dismiss as just being a reference to uh, the upcoming Christmas Day. Uh, but many others have said, well, Santa Claus was in fact one of the code words used. And this was his way of communicating to Cape Canaveral that in fact that they were seeing a UFO. Coming up, man first walks on the moon and finds out what's there waiting for him. If UFO historians are correct, America's dominance in the Cold War with the USSR depended on one primary objective, land a man on the moon and make contact with an alien presence before the Soviets could do it first. If there was extraterrestrial exotic technology on the moon, that would definitely fuel our need to get there first and the fastest so that we could reverse engineer this technology and use it for our own military purposes. If these theories are true, the fate of America and perhaps mankind was in the hands of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the crew of Apollo 11. Unsealed case file, dark side of the moon landing. July 16th, 1969, Apollo 11 was launched. The entire world was watching. The mission? Be the first humans to land on the moon, and as UFO experts believe, be the first to make contact with alien life. A terrifying prospect. The moon's surface seems very inhospitable, uh, forbidding almost. The hostile place, uh, a uh, scary place. What could be hidden in the conversations between Apollo 11 astronauts and Capcom, the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas? Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. According to UFO theorists, the most significant moment came when the transmission from Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong suddenly cut off for two minutes. Supposedly, in that audio transmission, there's a missing two minutes. What could have been in those missing two minutes? Now, there has been some unofficial uh, radio communications that have been circulated saying that basically Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin saw UFOs on the moon. No, no, this is not an optical illusion. No one's going to believe this. What's this? What's this? I say that there were other spaceships that lined up in the other side of the crater. There, there they are, and they're watching us. This was something that had been intercepted through ham, amateur ham radio and basically released through unofficial sources. There were a number of uh, NASA officials that claimed that this is, in fact was a genuine transmission from Neil Armstrong. Anytime we look at the communication taking place between Capcom and astronauts in space, there are two channels in use. There's the public channel relaying information. There's also the secret channel or the Department of Defense line where they can cut off the public feed and communicate securely between the astronauts and Capcom. NASA has never confirmed that the conversation took place. But even Buzz Aldrin himself has come forward stating that an unknown object was spotted outside Apollo 11. Could Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin be our first human ambassadors to space and have met aliens on the moon? It seems very possible that NASA already knew from the inception, sending people to the moon, that they had planned on doing some type of communication with other advanced beings. When Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong first walked on the moon, they planted an American flag and a plaque commemorating the mission. But they also reportedly left behind two items with a message. One was a gold olive branch of peace. The other was a silicon disc. On it were recorded statements of goodwill from 73 world leaders 
and the names of key U.S. Congress members and NASA. But if NASA never anticipated making contact with alien life, why did they prepare these greetings of peace before they went to the moon? What it means to anybody approaching this with an open mind is A, we're aware of an ET presence, and we're making a peace offering to ETs. Did Apollo 11, with their messages of peace, forge a bond with an alien race that continues to this day? Or did something happen out there that keeps mankind from returning? In my personal opinion, uh, there are alien bases on the moon, and they understood that there were a lot of political factors as to why the Apollo missions had to go ahead. But there have been a number of, of people who've worked with NASA saying that the aliens up there basically said, well, this is our turf, you don't belong here, and don't come back. Coming up, future missions expose the truth behind astronauts and UFO contact. We have an unidentified flying object and NASA insiders reveal the secret behind photos we weren't meant to see. You won't believe your eyes. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration landed a man on the moon in 1969 an event that may also have been our first contact with alien life, but is evidence of what NASA found on the moon hiding behind the biggest alleged cover-up in the history of space exploration. Unsealed case file, NASA's alien secret. NASA shuttle mission STS-73, October 21, 1995. Astronaut Catherine G. Coleman is working in the space lab module of NASA's U.S. Microgravity Lab when she declares something to Capcom. We have an unidentified flying object. It's fascinating how uh, astronaut Coleman was not panicked by this. Why wasn't she panicked by this? Well, very simply, as we reach out into space, as the space shuttle became commonplace at NASA, what was also commonplace were appearances of alien craft that were shadowing the shuttle. We have an unidentified flying object. The recording is investigated by a U.S. congressman. NASA responds that the comment was simply an innocuous remark. They also claim a sighting was impossible, as the space lab had no windows. But this diagram from the NASA website shows otherwise. Catherine Coleman from SBS 73 said, we have an unidentified flying object. If you're looking for confirmation, there it is. I think the last few decades have proven that NASA is definitely covering up something when it comes to the connection between UFOs and our astronauts. But what is it? This image appears to be a simple photo of the moon's Tycho crater, taken on June 10, 2011. But look closer. By simply adjusting the exposure of actual NASA photographs, an apparent cover-up becomes crystal clear. What's very interesting about this photograph is that everything seems to be somewhat normal, but then you come to a little spot on the photograph of something that it, it, the only way to describe it is being blacked out. It's actually omitted. They cut something out of the photograph that they didn't want you and I to see. Behind this photo editing may lie what alien theorists have suspected all along. Proof of structures or alien craft hidden on the moon. Well, this uh, object that was blacked out on the Tycho uh, Crater is, is the size of a football field. And it could be anything, uh, a, a base of some kind uh, that basically is being currently occupied by aliens or, or some entity that NASA doesn't want the public to know. If we look at some of the reports that actually have taken place where when we've gone to the moon and sent our astronauts there, they report seeing a full-on extraterrestrial base. It's possible that what we photographed on the moon in entirety was never shown to the general public. Apollo 16, April 21st, 1972. This image shows astronaut John Young saluting the American flag by the lunar roving vehicle. But what it doesn't show becomes more clear by adjusting the exposure. There's a very famous photograph, astronaut John Young, and he's saluting over his shoulder. 
all the way in the distance, there's a hanging light. Is it a UFO? Is it an orb? Is it actual proof of an extraterrestrial presence? On the right of John Young, on the right of the photo, there are razor marks. The razor marks are the telltale results of somebody trying to scratch out something from the photo. But in this particular case, some NASA photo processor was trying to doctor the photo with a razor to scratch out evidence of an alien presence on the moon. Dr. Farouk El Baz was head of astronaut training in the Apollo program for six years. While in mission control, he witnessed some of these unusual sightings firsthand. The one most peculiar sighting of something that we never found out what it was and we thought it should be easy to, was the sighting of flashes on the surface of the moon by Ken Mattingly during the Apollo 16 mission. One of the objectives of that Apollo 16 mission was to see how much can we see and photograph in the part of the moon that is not lit by the sun. The first time Ken Mattingly began to do this, he said, I just saw a flash. If Albaz is saying that the Apollo astronauts saw more than we understand and that we are led to believe that there really were UFOs out there or flashes of light, I think somebody in his position would know more than anybody. And I think we have to pay attention to that. But the deepest secrets of an alien cover-up may not come from NASA insiders. Recently, one man allegedly broke into the computer files of NASA to uncover what could be the most shocking discoveries yet. His name is Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon was a UFO investigator. What he found in the NASA classified files was evidence that NASA knew about UFOs. The files he allegedly uncovered are enough for the US government to attempt extradition from his native England. He currently could face charges leading up to 70 years in prison and $2 million in fines. If McKinnon could really prove his story, it would be huge for the UFO community because finally that proof and evidence would be there that NASA is part of that cover-up. Coming up next, we reveal the document that could prove that alien life not only exists on the moon, but that aliens are among us now, right here on planet Earth. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Alleged computer hacker Gary McKinnon claims he has seen proof that may expose the biggest cover-up in NASA's history. A simple list of military officers with an incredible story. When McKinnon came public about what he found, he talked about a document that he saw on NASA computers called non-terrestrial officers. If true, this document may not only be evidence of alien life on the moon, but of extraterrestrials working within NASA itself. No matter which way it went, it meant that NASA not only knew about an ET presence, but that it was dealing with an ET presence on a regular basis. If NASA has hidden the existence of aliens on the lunar surface, only those who have seen their secret files know the truth. But the next time you look up at the moon, ask yourself, could someone or something be looking back down at you? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.